in this video, I'm going to show you how Henry ran the best defense in the Madden community. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel, maybe this is your first time watching one of my videos, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21. We do that every day here on our channel through strategies, through tutorials, through tips, through tactics like this, videos like this that are designed to coach you, that are designed to train you, that are designed to give you different things to think about as you go through and put your game plan together. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to subscribe. Make sure to do that. That way you can get every single video that we release. We release videos every single day into our Madden community. Now that being said, I want to talk a second here about Henry and give him some compliments. This man is a is a is a beast. This guy is a phenomenal phenomenal Madden player. He understands the game at a different level. You can tell that this guy is just different, right? This is one of those players that has what it takes, I think, to be one of the best players to ever play in this game. Now that being said, I felt like he made some major mistakes against Goes. But the majority of those mistakes were almost all on the offensive side of the ball. They weren't on the defensive side of the ball. Henry's offense really, really let him down. Uh, and part of it was because I think Ghost brought a really, really good uh, gun bunch defense to the party. That being said, as we take a look at Henry's defense, I think Henry, if Henry would have never called a passing play, he would have won this game probably by 21 points. That's how good his defense played. Unfortunately, his offense played very, very poorly, and it ended up costing him a tournament, in my opinion. I th he was my favorite to win the entire tournament. So, as we think about that through that lens, we're going to dive into his defense. I'm going to give you a couple of things that he was doing that I thought was really, really effective um, on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to show you a couple coverages that he was running that I thought was really unique. And I thought it was very effective. So anyway, we're going to dive right into that. Uh, we're going to jump over here into gameplay. Okay, guys. So Henry was running 3-3-5 wide, as was the majority of the professional Madden community, right? 3-3-5 is the best defense in Madden. And I don't care what anybody will tell you. It is the best defense right now. And if you want to get my full 3-3-5 ebook, that link is in the description. We've been running this defense since the summer, and I cannot tell you how good this defense has been for me this year. I feel like my defense is in a very, very sweet spot, especially at this point in the season. I feel like it's almost automatic exactly what I need to do. So that being said, we're going to dive in a little bit here to his to how Henry was able to shut down Ghost. Uh, and Ghost was running the Carolina Bunch. I don't have the Carolina Bunch booted up, but I have something very similar to the Carolina Bunch in the New York Jets uh, gun bunch. Now, Ghost's favorite play was the mesh post concept, also the smash return concept, some of those, uh, you know, kind of staple gun bunch style of routes. And we're going we're gonna to dive into those. But again, I just want... And, and, and Henry was not running the 46 playbook. In my opinion, that was a mistake. Again, similar to Joke, he ran this, uh, he ran this, this scheme... Uh, but the thing about it is he ran this, and he ran the majority of his plays from 3-3-5 wide. About 80 to 85% of his play calls were from 3-3-5 wide, but he did not call the formation that allows him to get the best personnel from 3-3-5 wide on the field. Instead, he used a playbook really so that he could call dime one four six in must-pass passing scenarios and situations. All that to say, um, we're going to dive right in here. So first things first, his coaching adjustments. The way Henry played, and I'm not, a, again, I'm not a, you know, I, I can't prove this, but this is just kind of, from my film study, this is what I saw him doing. Um, he had auto flip on, he had auto alignment set to default, ball in air defense to play receiver. He then um, played cornerback matchups on balance, option defense to conservative, strip balls on balance, tacklings on balance, zone drops, he put his flats to 25 yards. Um, and the reason I think I'm pretty sure I'm accurate on this was if you watch the way that he would play some cover two style schemes, which we'll get into in a little bit, those cover two zones would drop back a little bit deeper, you know, than, than they normally would. Curl flats are set to five yards. Um, I believe that's 100% true. 
if you actually watch the way that he played, that's what I saw. Um, that's what I saw throughout the game. And then hook curls were at five. Now, this could have been flipped. I could be wrong about this. He could have had his flats on default. Um, but from what I could see, this was kind of his core uh, starting point. Now, all that to say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out in 335 and audible into 335 wide. Now, what I'm going to recommend is that you actually run this cover four show two as opposed to what Henry was doing, which was the Tampa 2. But we're going to go over the Tampa 2 a little bit in today's video. Now, all that to say, um, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit here is that the reason that you would audible into 335 wide from another formation is so that you can get better personnel on the field. What you get whenever you audible into 335 wide from 335 is you're able to put safeties all over your field. You're able to literally put safeties all across your defense. So, that being said, let's dive in and we're going to talk about a couple of specific plays that he utilized that I thought was very, very effective. The first one was a coverage out of the Mike Blitz 3. Now remember, we put those curl flats on five yards. I mean, they're going to jump down if we leave them on purple zones. So all we're going to do is we're simply going to spread our line and we're going to crash our line out. Now what Henry did, and this was almost always his adjustment against this gun bunch, he would almost always bring this guy back, this safety down into this position right here. And this was really his base setup. This was his base pressure defense. Basically, we've got the hard flats covered on both sides, and then we have, you know, the man coverage. Now, what he would also do is he would man this guy up on the outside a lot, and I mean a lot. Uh, most of the time, that guy was manned up, and as you can see here, you get pretty instant pressure. I mean, the pressure comes in super, super fast, and it's really, really hard to get the ball out against this kind of pressure. So what Henry understood on the offensive side of the ball is he 100% understood the fact that if he can, if he, if Ghost is going to consistently send uh, everybody out on a route, then I'm going to run this defense right here. Now, you also notice that Henry got a couple of interceptions as well. So, another little setup that he liked to use was this setup right here. This is similar to what Joke would do, but this is a little bit different because he, he would leave his safety kind of backed off here, like so. And, and really the reasoning, I think, was more for the run than it was for the pass. But basically the reason he did this was, let's say that uh, goes blocks the running back. If he were to blitz this guy with the safety, he could have a chance to get pressure even with the blocked running back, as you can see right here. And I didn't put him in the right position, so he did get picked up. But most of the time what we were seeing was he was not getting picked up, okay? He, Henry was able to just get this, get this pressure in. Uh, off this edge so again it might have been like right here was the placement so that he's outside you know i'm not a hundred percent sure uh, but he would bring that safety down a lot and when he brought that safety down um, normally it meant there was some kind of pressure coming off the side off the edge and it was going to make it really really difficult for goes to be able to step up in the pocket and make a read so that was one little tactic now the reason that that matters is let's say that he was doing that out of man coverage because that's the next thing i want to talk about the the two pressure setups were mike blitz o and mike blitz three so the first one from mike blitz o if we bring this guy down like this and we blitz him off the edge let's say that ghost was putting his backer or his running back on a quick little route right if ghost was putting his running back on a quick flat route what henry's rule of thumb was was i am going to automatically go to this guy over here now it's hard to show you with two controllers but basically at the snap of the ball if the running back went on on a route henry chose to just jump to the flat he was always going to go cover the flat if that happened and you actually saw he got a pick on that uh early on in the game against ghost because ghost sent that sent that five out kind of strategy and then you know basically henry uh, was able to get the pressure so again i think he brought him down to about right here He's standing kind of right here, and then that running back, if that running back was going out on the route, then Henry would just beeline over there, click on, and make the play to the to the, to the the running back. So that was one way to do it. The next way to do it was to call this Mike Blitz 3, and this was a favorite of Henry's. Henry loved this play uh, and ran this a ton. So again, we're going to bring this guy down just like so. We're going to bring this right in here, and we're just going to run this cup, this defense right here. Now, in this scenario, what Henry's going to do is he doesn't have to go to the flat, right? So now what he's going to do is, especially if they're running mess post, he's going to come over the middle of the field, and if he's if he's lurking well, he's going to get picks on any type of post route or streak route over the middle of the field. 
So those were the two main defenses that Henry was using in this game. Now, he did mix in some man coverage, just coverage defense. He did mix in some zone coverage, just coverage defense. This man adjusts like crazy. I think he, I think he's got a really, really phenomenal uh, defensive scheme. If you actually study what he's doing and why he's doing it through the course of a game, you're going to find that this guy is unreal defensively. He's very, very good defensively. Ghost is one of the best offensive players in the entire community, and Henry locked him down not just using man coverage, but he locked him down using zone coverage, which not very many people were doing at this time. A lot of people were running man coverage in the tournament, but Henry was one of the few that I felt like ran the majority of the defense that he ran against Ghost. Like this coverage right here, it was it was literally this. It was Mike Blitz with the hard flats, okay. And what we were going to basically rely on was this match coverage on the outside. Now, this has since changed, so you might need to have an outside quarter over there, right, to take to take that away. Now, this is where, you know, goes. What he could have done is, you know, he could have done something like, um, you know, basically this right here, like this setup right here, right? He could have done something like this and tried to get some one-play touchdowns going. But as you can see, that outside quarter, it, it, it takes that away. So... The point being here, these are some zone concepts. We're, we're doing some things with outside thirds. We're doing some things with outside quarters. At the time, the outside third was the way to go. Now it's probably more outside quarter. But, again, you would see stuff like this. Another thing that you could see is you, you might even see something like taking some cross manning uh, of both of the linebackers. You know, something simple like this right here. This was a very good setup that he was using just to take away the quick stuff and then obviously the late crossing routes that might happen uh, or come into, come into focus. So, anyways, that's a little bit about nickel 335 wide. This is the best defense in the Madden community right now. All of the best players are running this defense. And the reason why is because it's truly the best defense. Now, defense ultimately comes down to the adjustments that you make throughout the course of a game. And if you want to get a full guide to my adjustments, my strategies, and my schemes from this Nico 335 wide, that link is in the description. I've been running this defense since June. I've got it about where I want it. I think it's the best defense in the community right now. I think a lot of people will struggle um, to beat this consistently. It's going to get you consistent stops. It's going to hold people to three points. It's such a good defense. So if you haven't picked it up yet, that link is in the description. The last thing I want to let you know of is if you want to get a free sample to this ebook or if you just have Madden questions in general, you can always text me. My number is 812 216 3644. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you guys in tomorrow's uh, video. We'll also see you on tonight's stream at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time.